like to call the meeting to order at 701 for Frontier Regional on September 14th, 2021. At 701. Uh, first thing is reorganization of our school committee. So I take it from here? Yep. And I, was, I said I was ready, but I was still moving stuff around. Um, all right. Uh, first order uh, is uh, seeking nominations for chairs. We organize here. Any nominations for chair? Nominated Albert Halla. We have a second for Bob. Second. All right, thank you. Um, other nominations? Well, Y'all need to give me a second to figure out who's talking here. Okay. Who seconded? Keith. Thank you. All right, hearing no, one more, oh, Mary just jumped on. Mary, we have a, a first and a second on Bob Hall being chair, looking for any other nominations. Seeing none, I will close nominations. All those in favor for Bob to be chair. We have to do a roll call on this. I will do it, I guess, yeah, sure. I'll go with who I see on the screen, Mary. Yes. Missy. Yes. Keith. Yes. Damien. Olivia. Yes. I didn't hear you, but we know you said. Um, Lynn. Yes. Bill. Yeah. That's it. And me, yes. Bobby, you got to vote for yourself. All right. So I hand the meeting over to you, Mr. Okay. Chair. You're going to be looking for vice chair. I'll work on the list here. Um, I guess the, the first thing is uh, vice chair. Uh, do I nominate them? Nope. Vice chair and secretary elected. So look okay. at the nominations for vice chair. Bill, would you like to do vice chair again? Chair. I nominate Bill Smith for vice chair. Second. Do I have a second. Second. Mary second. Any other nominations for vice chair? No. Uh, we got to do a roll call again. Yep, for the elected positions. Okay. You want to? You want to? You want to do it, Lynn? You want to call off the names and be easy for you that way, or? Yeah, that's fine. I can do that. Okay. Um, Bob. Yes. Keith. Yes. Me? Yes. Mary? Yes. Mel uh, Melissa? Mr. Yes. Phil? Yeah. Damien? Damien? Is he on? He's got a thumbs he's, up. He's got a thumbs up. Okay. Got... We'll take it. Olivia? Yes. And is Ashley absent? Yes. I think Ashley's absent. Okay. And I'm assuming, do I ask Bill? Yep, you can vote yep. for okay. Bill, you want to be vice chair? You asked me that already. Oh, okay. <laughs> you wanted your vote. Can I abstain? No, no. Yes, that's fine. Okay. Is that it? And you're doing Judy. I mean, not me doing secretary. <laughs> She's going to kill me. Just let everybody know, Lynn's doing the secretary tonight because Judy's in California. So just bear with us a little bit here. She was nice enough to do it for us. So, so do you want to table the secretary until she can no. be here to voice no. it? Is that what you're saying? I nominate Judy Pierce for, for secretary. Second. Anybody else second. want to be secretary? All in favor, you can do a roll call on this one. If you tell me who seconded it. Oh, Bill Smith. Bill Smith. Oh, thank you, Bill. Sorry. Uh, Bob. Yes. Keith. Yes. Me, yes. Mary. Yes. Melissa. Do you like Melissa or Missy? Missy, the <laughs> only person that calls me Melissa is my mom. 
Oh. <laughs> Don't want to make the mistake. Phil. Yo, Phil. Phil's not here. Phil's not here. Calling Phil. Damien. <laughs> you got thumbs up again? Thumbs up. Okay, cool. We'll say so. Bill? Yes. Olivia? Yes. And Ashley's absent. Okay. The next ones we I nominate or not nominate, but fill the positions. Yep. So you know you're going to point the, yep. the rest of them. Um, yep. Can we read through them? So you got budget subcommittee. Bill, you want to do it for Waitley again? Yeah. Mary for Deerfield. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Keith for Sunderland. Yes. Thank you. And we're going to put Phil down for um, Conway. Even though he's not here. Okay. Negotiation teams. Uh, we'll start off again. Oh, I, am I going too fast, Lynn? No, I got it. Okay. No negotiation team. Phil will be for Conway. Lynn, would you like to do it for Sunderland again? Sure. I'll do it for Waitley. And Olivia, you'll do it again for Deerfield. Thank you. Capital uh, Improvement Committee, um, yes for myself. Phil for Conway. Judy for uh, Sunderland. And Damien, can you do it for Deerfield? I can, and I'm trying to work on my mic. Can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you over there, yeah. Okay, I disconnected and reconnected, but okay, yeah. as long as you guys can hear me now. Um, yep. Yes, I, I will do it for Deerfield. Thank you. Okay, collaborative. Lynn, do you want to still do the collaborative? Sure. Okay. Mars, uh, Missy, would you like to do it still? Yes. Thank you. Policy Review Committee, I'll do it again. Put Mr. Cantor down for a second person. Olivia, can you do it? Absolutely. And Lynn, can you do it? Yes. Thank you. And the sick bank, Lynn, you want to do it again with Judy? Sure. Okay. Judy will have a few things we'll tell her at the next meeting. Okay, that's all the appointments. Um, We'll now review the minutes uh, from June 8th, 2021. And can we do them all at one time, Darius? Yep, you can put them together. All right. Just as long as everybody knows they are. Let me just see who wasn't here. Okay. On the June 8th, everybody was here except for Ashley. So just to let you know. And on. August 18th. Bear with me. Uh, and Ashley was not present on the 18th. So I need a motion for minutes from June 8, 2021, and a special meeting with the Frontier and the Union from August 18th. Move to accept, Mr. Oh, Chair. Thank you. I'll second that. And Olivia will second it, Lynn? Yep. And want to do a roll call, please? Yep. Uh, Bob? Yes. Uh, Keith? Yes. Lynn, yes. Mary? Yes. Missy? Yes. Bill? Yes. Here. Oh, you are. Okay. Uh, Damien? Yes. Bill? Yes. Olivia? Yes. Yep. Get up. And Ashley's Is Bill on now? Someone said yes. I don't see him now. Okay. I think we had a Phil and a Bill mix up there. Okay. Yeah, I, answered, oh. I answered it both to make sure I get it right. <laughs> so Phil is still absent for the record. <laughs> Thank you. Shelly, I can't give the financial report, even though I'm in your office, but I think you're home, right? 
I'm here. You can do it if you want. It's okay. Please, no. I've already done it twice tonight. So, All right. So I did send you out the expense reports year to date, as well as the narrative. I'm going to go quickly through here. There's not a ton to discuss, but wanted to follow up on a few things. Um, so 50 warrants were signed over the summer due, during June and July. Uh, and the total on those warrants, um, they were for closing out fiscal year 21 and for new bills in 22, including um, salaries and wages that are paid over the summer. Uh, so that total was $4,149,550.63, which Lynn is in my report, if you want to copy and paste that over. That'd be great. Um, so a couple of follow-ups from last year, uh, just as reminders and giving you updates on where things landed. So we had voted or you had voted in, I think, the May meeting um, because we anticipated an overage in the regional transportation. You had voted to move up to $150,000 uh, from the transportation revenue account into a regional transportation revolving fund. Uh, the transfer or adjustment, I should say, was 116000 So those funds will be available when we do the budget and the assessment for fiscal year 23, we will have additional funds to help offset the assessment. So that's great news there. Um, and then just an update on the excess and deficiency that was voted in May. So that was almost 160,000. Uh, we used about 40,000 for Berkshire Design to finish paying off the track contract with them. Uh, we had purchased 25000 in track equipment, which I think is still on order. It hasn't come in yet. Everything is taking a long time. Um, we finished paying off uh, Mountain View contract overage, uh, which was also track related. Um, you had agreed to uh, give Darius the freedom to look up uh, purchasing a new vehicle, a van, uh, which we did place an order for a 10 passenger vehicle over the summer. Um, the lead time is probably six months at a minimum to get that van in, but it is in place. Um, and as soon as it's in, we'll be ready to pick it up. We've already been working with the insurance company and whatnot. So that's also great news for us. And then we had the $35,000 that we pulled off of the town warrant request. So that was for the gym and auditorium duct cleaning, which has been completed. And then the new stage curtains, which have not been ordered yet, but the funds are still there. Um, so... That's a little recap for you. Uh, we did have excess budget funds um, and that gets rolled into our E&D, whatever we don't spend. Um, some funds were reclassified to school choice to increase our school choice savings. Uh, and then anything that was remaining after that is moved into the E&D calculation, which our auditors are currently working on. I received some adjustments today that they sent through. I'm hoping that we're going to be done by the end of the month, which will be much farther ahead of time than we have been in at least the last two or three years. Uh, the filing is not due until late October, but I'd love to get it in ahead and get us certified early so that we know what our numbers look like. We're not going to be over. Um, I don't want to throw a number at you right now, but the preliminary figures look about where we typically want to be, which is between that four and five hundred thousand dollar range. So I think we'll be in good shape. Um, we had we could go up to like five hundred and ninety thousand before we hit the five percent overages. So um, I'm pleased with how things are going right now to close out the books and get that finished up. Any questions before I go on to fiscal year twenty two? So I did share out the expense reports with you. Um, I'm happy to take questions if you have them. Frontier does have some overages and accounts already. However, if you look at the bottom line of any particular function code, uh, we're really in good shape so far. There's not a ton of concerns. It might just be that we went over in one category and we're under in another and you know things wash out in the end there. Um, but there were some items that I did wanna mention going into this year. Uh, we are talking with the special education department about higher out of district placement costs. Um, the expenses could be fully reimbursable through school choice. And if that is the case, then that would be a wash. There would be no budget impact for this school year. Um, but nothing is finalized with that yet. But again, wanted to bring it to your attention because it would be a higher amount than what we uh, had talked about for budget season. 
Um, we did have to hire an additional IA over what was budgeted. Um, that IA was to meet specific student needs and was required with an IEP. Um, and it is intended that this position, unless that IEP continues for next year, um, that it would be a one-year position unless we have to carry it over based on student needs. Uh, we are looking at technology accounts. I'm in conversation with our tech director, Scott Paul, pretty regularly. Um, this is a district-wide issue. We added a lot of software and programming last year. Um, and so now we're trying to iron out all these kinks of things that whether we have to continue them again, um, they worked really well, they didn't work so well for us and trying to iron all of that out. So I'm not concerned about that account. We do have grant funds available if we need to help offset some of those tech needs, but it will be things that we have to start thinking about moving forward because some things that were implemented in COVID have worked really well and we wanna carry through with them even though you know we're back into a normal school. Uh, we had several personnel changes. <laughs> I think George is probably tired of interviewing and hiring new people. Um, and some of those changes, whether it was from retirements or resignations, they resulted in budget savings because the new hire came in at a lower column or lower step than the previous teacher or instructional assistant. So we are seeing some savings in personnel and salaries and wages. Uh, we are expecting some additional budget savings for transportation. That is because we are currently down two buses. Um, I don't know if Darius will maybe talk about this a little bit more in his report, or you can jump in now if you want. Um, Gribco is only running two buses for our Deerfield runs currently. We normally would have four. And so there's some savings happening there. They're crediting us per day that those buses are not running. It's due to staffing shortage on their end and they are looking to get the buses back online um, as soon as we possibly can or they possibly can. So um, <clears throat> right now I'm estimating about $6,000 in savings there. The other big savings that we're seeing is uh, for our benefits. So when we build the budget, the health and dental insurance premiums are not out yet for the new fiscal year. Um, we always build in, I believe I did a three and a half percent increase to prepare for any potential rate, which feels that feels like a safe number. Rates actually came in lower. Health went down 2% and dental went down 9%. So not only do we have the savings of the three and a half percent, we also have additional savings on top of that. Some of it gets washed if more people pick up benefits and those kind of things. Um, but I, we are going to see a significant difference budget to actual in that benefit line. Um, and the last thing that I want to comment on is just an FYI for you so that you know in the business office how we're trying to improve and increase efficiency and in processes and procedures. Our school lunch fund, um, it has been somewhat recorded in the database for Frontier, but not in its entirety. We're digging a little bit deeper this year so that we can get real, more real-time data and get our numbers online. So better checks and balances between the food service office and our office as far as cash that's coming in. Um, student accounts, making sure that we're reconciling, you know, and trying to keep everybody on the same page and all of the ducks in a row with that fund, especially given the loss in revenue over the last couple of years. Uh, and the only other thing is the other schools are seeing updates from me on revolving funds. I don't have that here because I don't want to give you revolving fund end of year balances and anticipated um, FY22 numbers until the audit is finished because some things always get moved around. I didn't want to come in today with, you know, say we have 500,000 in school choice and then we have adjustments in the audit that brings that number up or down. So hopefully I'll have more realistic numbers for you, if not the October meeting, because that's joint. Definitely by November, we'll be able to look at things, but I'm not concerned about anything at this point. Otherwise, it, it would be here. So happy to take questions if you have them. How did we deal with the HVAC? Costs in the auditorium, Shelly? Uh, yeah, that was being um, funded from the ESSER 3 grant. So that cost was about $80,000 for that unanticipated repair. Um, we had built into the grant, oh, Sarah, correct me if I'm wrong, but I want to say $100,000 for facilities. And I think we're using all 80 of almost all of it for um the upgrade there, the repair. So the downside, the positive side is we had that money available. 
Um, the downside is that we had other projects that we had intended to tackle with that ESSER grant money. So um, we're losing out on some of that and, you know, might be coming and asking for school choice funds or other funds to make up for what we had planned to use that extra grant money for. Um, but fortunate it, it was there. And in the Everything's been ordered, but the lead time without any delays was 10 to 12 weeks. So, you know, it won't be up and running before we need to use it, unfortunately. Um, but we had the money. It's just for, it's, it is further on the agenda. So, we, yeah. we, but I just wanted to bring clarification because you guys all know that because I sent you an email, but the public that's watching is that the, the major um, air unit that runs our auditorium and any of the off classrooms of it um, went down right before school opened. And so, um, and in order to fix it, it would cost about half the price of replace half the price of replacing it, and the, they would not guarantee much of it because there's been so many repairs to it over the last 20 years. So it's a, you know, is there a 20 or 25 year old year old unit? So we made the decision to replace the whole unit um, for eighty thousand dollars. And so I just want I want to say that out loud because it there was no introductory to Bill's question of you know. If you're watching at home, you're like, what are you talking about? So when it comes on the agenda, I'll talk a little bit about AC and capital stuff as well. I was going to ship, I was going to throw that in there. Okay. You got anything else for us, Shelly? Is that it? That's it for now. Anybody else have any questions? I guess we'll go right to public comment. And as of Three o'clock, I didn't have any public comment unless somebody is on that wants to speak. Okay, no public comment. Uh, do we have a student council reporter tonight? Uh, George, have they got up and running yet? I'm not sure if they have that ready for tonight. So okay. I don't believe there's anybody here for, for tonight. Maybe the next next meeting it'll be a, it'll be a joint meeting i'm not sure if we want one i'm there for the joint meeting and all but it could be a long wait but thanks okay unfinished business Darius, you want to give us a COVID update please um yeah so the, basically the COVID update is starting with pool testing we up we got up and running in pool testing last week um and i, I do have to give hats off to um uh, nurse uh, Meg Birch for making that happen. A lot of the area schools around us, apparently the vendor from the state has kind of fallen, is not met expectation um, and, you know, provided us personnel provided, you know, so they're going to have everything up and ready to go. And they're still not up and ready to go for many of the districts around us, but we were able to get it up and running. And it also by the heroic efforts of other people, including our administrators who became nurse, um, Nurses going up and down the hall, doing swabbing, and some of our other support staff who helped out there because we have to, you know, we get four carts going in order to do the whole building. So we were able to um, get it last week and this week, um, and um, have it to report. There's been no positive cases. In my report that I sent out, I gave you the most up to date um, numbers across all the district regarding pool testing um, percentage rate um, of the population that's doing that. So. Um, we're happy to have that going, um, and as you also know, we did in, we did enforce the policy that you passed last time that athletes um, need to um, pool test to participate. And I'm hoping there um, those who are reluctant to that are understanding how that all kind of works now. There was I had some conversation with some parents that were concerned that um, we'd be misdiagnosing and people would be missing things, you know, due to the way the testing was rolled out. And I'm just kind of saying that it's not how it's set up. There's a double test standard. Pools go out, they come back. We test again to find out who is the positive case and then we're able to remove them from um, you know a team before they spread further um, or at all so um, anyway so I'm just you know letting you know about that I did attend a meeting on Friday um, with superintendents and the commissioner and in person actually in, in Holyoke and um, you know he talked a little bit about the ideas of what the October 1 because remember he did the mask mandate after you guys um, pass the mask policy and the boards of health pass the policy about what's going to happen October 1. He basically said that, you know, um, he's going to be looking at the data later in the month, but he is, you know, um, looking possibly to change it to um, looking at vaccination status of buildings and pool testing percentages and what the um, 
overall uh, numbers are in the county or town. He wasn't, he goes, they're working on the specifics. Um, I asked him a very pointed question, which I, I guess I apologize in the last public meeting, but um, where I was kind of rude to him, but I basically asked the question, so we're gonna go through what we went through in August and have a fight about masks again in October. And his response actually was a good one. He said, so basically, you know, he said that the when we create these policies in an emergency, it's easy to add policies, it's hard to remove them. And we are a state with local control. So eventually it is gonna come back to the hands of your school committee, whether or not it's in October, November, December, January, at some point, the school committee is gonna be left with a decision about how we're gonna pursue forward, um, how we're gonna move forward on um, policy. The state is not going to take the lead and guide us through that. Um, so he said that, I kind of put that out there right now, if you know he decides to roll out something, it's probably gonna be complicated. It's gonna probably require data that we don't have in hand yet. Um, and um, right now we are covered with a mask policy set by the Board of Health and by your policy. So if, even if the state was to suddenly change direction, I would need the Board of Health to change their decision. I would need the school committee to change their policy. Just letting you know that as a, that, that October 1 date looms, whether or not he may be extended for a month and you know it may just kick that problem down the hall down the road, but I just wanted to let people know because that obviously was a very um, was a very difficult meeting, which we'll talk about a little bit more when we talk about public comment. But um, any comments or questions re or to me regarding that meeting with the commissioner, I guess. Um, all right. Well, that's the kind of the COVID update. If you have any questions regarding what's going on in the buildings, I'm going to throw George to you if you have questions regarding anything specific about changes there. I do want to say that what wasn't said at the August meeting is that mask, we do we are changing the way we do business in the schools. And I really didn't emphasize that or didn't say that at all at the meeting that masks are needed for that, where we're needed no matter what for this, this recent phase. We went from how students moved, how students were potted, and really went back to a lot of our operations um, pre-COVID and meaning that, you know, students are mixing class, are mixing from class to class, a small, smaller group instruction, you know, those kind of things and full capacity to that kind of stuff. And so having a mask absolutely made sense that we started these new kind of things um, as we, as we rolled out these kind of new plans. So I'm just kind of stating that out loud as well. Um, saying that we, that wasn't really talked about last meeting. So I talked too much. I'll stop. Does everybody have any questions for Darius about COVID? Okay, you want to give us an update on anti-racism? Yep, uh, the anti-racism committee hasn't met yet for this year, so they are, we're not up and running to, for their report tonight. But I did want to announce that um, we have um, hired the Radical Empathy Consulting Group. Um, that's the group that was working with the Frontier um, PD last year. Um, we've actually hired them on to help um, guide our our equity committee and administration through our work this year. Um, we, you know, I heard a lot of feedback about getting another lens on things about where we're going. We had a, a, a kind of a disconnect, the way things were structured. Um, we had a committee and we had administration and I really wanted to have an outside group come in and work on bringing those two groups together. Um, it was asked in the last question, you know, regarding, you know, whose decision was this? Um, myself, Sarah Mitchell and, and Kim McCarthy got together over the summer and started looking for consultants. Um, and um, decided, you know, there's not a lot of ones that are available, and a lot of them aren't going to pick up where we've left off in our work and are going to want us to be kind of jumping into their either their programs or, or whatnot that they're that they're selling sometimes. Um, and so this was a group that we have familiar with. They did a wonderful job with Frontier. Um, and so we're looking to do a kickoff meeting as soon as we get a confirmation of that date. I don't know, Sarah, if you got that this afternoon. I know we were waiting on that. Um, for possibly uh, the 29th, where I'll, I'll send an invite out to the entire community to gain new membership and that kind of stuff. And then um, I also was, there was a request from community members about, can we get, you know, give some more information about them, profiles and that kind of stuff. And we asked them to provide us with that as well. Um, Sarah, is there anything kind of loose? I, no, I think you summed it up nicely. Um, we, we're waiting for a couple of confirmations from them and we're looking forward to expanding their role with us. Uh, it was a very well-received group at Frontier. 
Um, and I think they're well equipped to step in because they know some of the work that we've done to date and they'll be able to take us to the next level and the next uh, steps this year. Questions on that? So again, it's the 29th, and so then from then we'll be of kind of what's, uh, I mean, our professional development plans are in place. You've seen that and shared. So that's already kind of lining up and um, Sarah's here tonight too, if you wanna ask her questions on anything that has to do with that is how that's lining. We had some sections where she's had to shift things around as we try to bring in different presenters and, and um, educators to work with our staff. Um, Missy, you got a question? I'm sorry. Oh, well, it's okay. I just put it on. Um, do you know if the student group is still meeting as well? I don't know specifically. I am making the assumption that yes, they will be meeting again. They were pretty committed to that. Um, we've also rolled out a couple of courses, but um, I feel pretty confident that that will be, we haven't started our um, early release Fridays and they used to dovetail with some of those um, dates. George, you lean forward. Are you confirming that? Yes, I was, I'm sorry. I was, I, I was, yeah, they are still meeting. The, 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 you're talking about the mentoring group, right, Missy? Yes. Yeah, they're still meeting. Does anybody else have any questions? Okay. Darius, you want to give us a great track report? Yes. So um, the track is the final walkthrough meeting is on Monday. Um, and so we have posted that for the, the, the group that uh, you've signed for change orders. Um, there were some change orders over the summer. Um, the first one being that the track company was able to, um, as you know, the red up, the coloring the, the track red was a $40,000 charge. Um, they were able to offer it to us for $15,000. Is that my numbers right there, Shelly? I'm going off memory here. Um, it was only twelve five. Twelve five, because Shelly talked them down a little further. Um, <laughs> basically because they were doing a track up the road with the same color. And so they said, if you, you know, if you put this on, we could do it at this cost. And um, the subcommittee met on that and not to, if the subcommittee can jump in at any time they want to kind of uh, voice what you kind of said there. Um, but basically um, it really shows that we did the track over. It looks wonderful. Um, and it was certainly an upgrade that um, while, um, Aesthetically, it doesn't change the surface of the track at all. It certainly is very aesthetically pleasing now. You know you're on. Um, and Bob's got some pictures. She's, uh, I, tried to, I tried to get some to share tonight and they didn't, the person didn't send them to me. We also, we also spent around, what was the asphalt charge, Shelly? In the end, I remember they went back and forth. It was around five It grade. was uh, 64.73. 6473 on basically we did not the asphalt that leads into the track from the asphalt that was replaced by the town of Deerfield for the town meeting for those of you who've been out there you know what I'm talking about you had this brand new asphalt and then there was a stretch leading up to the track well we would have had this really ugly stretch where grass was growing through and then um, heaving and that kind of stuff and you know accessibility and that kind of stuff so um, the, the, the committee made a decision to also to get it done right if we're going to we're not going to go up that far and not do the front step to the track um, correctly. So um, that money uh, was approved by them as well. And I, we did the, the old tree. There's a, I forget the age of that tree. Does anyone in the community remember? But it's about a hundred year old tree, um, silver oak. Um, the question was whether or not that had to come down. It's a beautiful tree. Um, and so they looked at that. They looked at the root systems and they said, basically, you should do some pruning. So we brought in a the tree company to not only prune that, but prune all the trees along the wooded side so that debris would not be landing on our brand new track. Um, and that cost was, Shelly? 46.25. I feel like I'm on prices right. <laughs> yes, and you won, you won some tree cutting. So there's some cabling and some tree cutting. So we were able to save that tree, which is a beautiful shade tree. Um, and obviously also just beautiful in the backdrop. Instead of the train track, you have a nice tree. Um, and they don't believe the roots are going to cause any problems because that tree has been there long before that track has been um, uh, shifted and whatnot. So they, so they said. So did they miss anything, subcommittee? 
So we have a walkthrough on Tuesday. Um, Monday. Monday, rather. And um, I know there's one little small issue with the lineage. They didn't mark one of the starts, so we're working on that. But outside of that, everything is in, um, I got to tell you, the contractors, um, uh, Mountain View Landscaping have been outstanding. And I just got to use the, use the word outstanding. They move stuff for us when we requested. You know, we had uh, track materials that they had a forklift there. You know, they spent an hour moving stuff for us. They moved our ticket booth, put a new bed down. This is all free of charge. They fixed fencing on the other side of the property, used materials on that part of that fencing to another part of our fencing to save us money. Um, they put in a bed for a shed for the, you know, the, the equipment uh, for the baseball field and that kind of thing. They just all, again, um, can't, I just gotta say hats off to them and they should definitely write down as a recommendation because um, they were outstanding. Did they solve the mystery of who stole the grass seed? What's that? Did they solve the mystery of who stole the grass seed? No, you know, we did have a theft that someone um, came in and stole, um, I think, around $500 worth of fertilizer and grass seed. So if you see a, a sale on the side of the road, question them where they get that seed. Um, and unfortunately, it's, you know, um, it's not something that was sitting there for weeks. It was there, dropped off, and a day later it was gone. So and they stole some hoses and that kind of stuff. Overall, I'm told that's not a high theft rate compared to these kind of projects, but I, you know, was embarrassed for our community that that had happened. Darius, can we get a formal letter letter from the school committee and maybe all of us could sign at the next meeting and stuff that we could send it to them and yep. that way they can have it for their records and, you know, I think I, I think that'll be great for them and, you know, big thank you from us. Yep, that makes sense. And I guess, like I said, the walkthroughs on Monday, um, it's um, the walkthrough on Monday is kind of the closeout of that. Uh, What's Mountain, the view, Mountain View Landscaping, Lynn. Can I add a couple of things before we move on? Yep. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, they also just mowed the football field the other day, Darius. I don't know if you heard of them, but they did mow the field for us. So that was nice. Um, but I wanted to let you know about the loan in case anyone wants to know about the borrowing part of this. So <laughs> we did borrow 630000 Uh, We put that out to bid in late June um, into the market through our financial advisor and the winning bank interest rate percentage was 0.35% interest. So our um, first, when it comes due, the first assessment, if we don't borrow anything more between now and the end of the year, that first assessment will be less than $3,000 divided up amongst our four towns. So incredible that, that we could do it for that, such a small cost. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is, I want to ask if anyone wants to know what the final cost was now that we're all done. You know what? Can anybody imagine what happens when you drive up in your new car and you're like, hey, Shelly, come look at my new car. And she's like, okay, let's get right down. Let me see the sales sheet. I'm gonna take the How much was it, Shelly? It's what you're paying me for. Um, the total project cost was $729,234. So we had an overage of just shy of $100,000, uh, which we have covered primarily through E&D that you all approved last year, those items that I talked about, the contract overages and then the track equipment. And then the other, um, it's about 27,000 we ended up paying between last year's budget that had savings available in, in certain lines. And then this year's budget has absorbed a, just a small amount for little things here or there. Yes, the total number, Lynn, 729,234. And, and I want to thank everybody that had a part in this because it's been long overdue. And I think Mr. Smith is really happy that it's done. Is he happy, Bill? As happy as he gets. <laughs> well, he's happier now. He has a brand new granddaughter, so. Okay, any other questions on the track? If not, then... Uh, we're going to talk about a revised non-union personnel handbook, and we need to vote on it. 
So this is a follow up from our I think we were trying to do this in May or June. Uh, we had a list of person uh, policy changes for the non union personnel. So a reminder, this is custodians, cafeteria staff, secretaries, business office staff. Um, and we did not vote at that meeting because I believe Lynn had asked a question about the sick bank time. Uh, we were looking to change the policy from a maximum of 150 days to 120 days. And Lynn had asked how many employees would that impact? Uh, so we did the research and it is five out of, uh, I wanna say, I think 19, I'm not remember the, the total number, but I think it's five out of 19. Um, and what Darius and I would like to propose so that those five employees are not losing any of their accumulated time is that anyone who has over the 120 days, which again is five employees, um, anyone who has over the 120 days gets to carry their balance as of 7-1, because that's when we were looking for this to be approved for, and that's their maximum. So if somebody has 180 days accumulated, they get to carry their 180 maximum. If they have more than that, they get to carry more of that. Um, so that was sort of the you know, solution to a potential problem of employees losing sick bank days that they've earned over the years working here. And we're talking about longtime employees. We're not talking about anyone who just started. We're talking about people who have been here for 20, 30 years that it, it would impact. So it's almost like they're grandfathered in. Exactly. Yep. And no, they're not being paid out for those days. That is kind of a, that is something if they were just, it's almost a disability insurance plan they would have to have. And of course, in order to access that, they would have to have medical documentation and such. So you know, someone carrying 180 days, you you know, you're not. It's not a greater liability on the district, um, unless you know, obviously, unless there's a, a tragic accident and, or something of that kind of thing, where they would have access to those days. Um, again, I look at a disability insurance. Is there any? Is there anything else on the update? Was that the only part of the? That was the only thing that was questioned when we had talked about this originally. Um, and I think if you know, if that's a good. Uh, solution to this potential problem. We'd love to have your vote to go ahead and push this out. I need a motion and a second, please. Move, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Bill. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Damien. And Lynn, you want to do a roll call, please? Yep. Uh, Bob? Yes. Keith? Yes. Lynn, yes. Mary? Yes. Missy? Yes. Damien? Yes. Bill? Yes. Olivia? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Okay, we got lots of new business. First thing, uh, Allison wants to go to Washington, D.C. in March of 2022 with her AP government and AP Eero. Allison, you want to give us a little lowdown? Sure. Um, I'm actually talking about two trips, one for 2022 and one for 2023. I'll start with the sooner um, without leaving the country, going to Washington, D.C. Um, AP government teacher Laura Moore and I have done a trip um, to Washington, D.C. with our AP students for 10 years now, over 10 years now. And we'd like to, as long as everything is fine, take the juniors and seniors in those classes to Washington, D.C. for five days next March. It may be the, from the 16th to the 20th, or it may be the 23rd to the 27th. It's going to depend on hotel costs and and transportation. So we we would just like approval to start getting numbers and going ahead and talking to the students. We would go on. Um, oh, actually, I got the days mixed up. It would be it would be from a Saturday morning until a Wednesday. So actually, it would be a little different. Um, I was looking Wednesday to Sunday. But we would leave on a Saturday morning. We would have a day to do museums, but it would start with going to Arlington National Cemetery for um, the changing of the guard and at the Tomb of the Unknown. And then we would spend the afternoon going to museums. 
Um, we've been able to go to the um, African American History Museum, the Holocaust Museum, the um, National Gallery. Um, we take them to as many museums as we can. Uh, Laura is wonderful in making arrangements to do an early morning trip to the Supreme Court on a day that they've got cases. They stand in line. Um, they sometimes get in. Sometimes kids get to sit for an hour. Other times it's just sort of the walkthrough. Um, and then she has so many contacts with, with our representatives and is usually able, able to get us in to see Jim McGovern. We've been able to meet with the staff of Elizabeth Warren. We've actually gotten to meet with her a couple of times. And we get to bring the kids there to meet their representatives and ask questions. And, and um, the kids have a, a really good time. Um, because they're older, they have some freedom. We take them around on the subways. We're not you know, traveling on a, on a bus on and off. And we have, we have the opportunity to, to show the kids a lot more of DC just walking around. And so we'd like permission to start planning that one. We know that there's the possibility that um, there might be requirements for people who are staying in some of the hotels might have to have vaccinations. And I guess we'll have to approach that um, when we find out information from the hotels and if there's you know requirements if we go into the Capitol building and offices. Um, but I do know all of the museums are already open in Washington, DC. And so at least that's one of the things that we know is, is gonna be fine. Does anybody have any questions for Allison on, on this first trip? So Bob, I, I just to kind of let the committee know, so you, you also have sitting in a, this is kind of the approval to get her allowed her to start the planning. You know, we're going to come back around and have a discussion because we have two grades, middle school grades looking, no, middle school, eighth and ninth grade looking to go to Washington, D.C. as well. And so there is going to be that discussion is going to be coming forward. It's kind of a little premature now, um, but they're starting to move forward with their planning as well um, and what, what that can look like. So um, it's kind of tough in September to make that call, but I'm just kind of saying that there's a, other students also looking to go as well. So, but yep. you give the initial I believe approval for planning. And then at some point we have to have a cut date and where we're gonna to have to make a decision if they're gonna be able to go or not. So that if it's a no, we have, you know, people can be refunded and so on and so forth. Is this something we need to vote on for approval to get the ball moving? Yeah, so basically you, you always hold the right to rescind um, just like you did, unfortunately, right. uh, you know, before. So you can basically just say, you know what, you're giving approval now with, and you'll get an update as we have more information closer to the trip. Um, so I don't have any guidance on which, which way that should go. I don't have any research on that. So I'm just telling you what, just reminding you in case you were, you had forgotten. We, okay. we were, just so people know, we were able, so when the schools closed down in March of 2020, we were one week away from doing our 2020 trip and we were able to get all of the money back to the students. We were able to get the money back from the buses and we got the money back from the hotel. So for that, for the March trip, we were able to, you know, get everything back to the students because of the cancellations. Thanks. So I, unless there's any questions, I need a motion a second to give Allison uh, and her team to get the ball moving. I'll motion to give them permission. Thanks, Olivia. Second. Any other discussion? All in, oh, Lynn, you want to do a roll call, please? Sorry. You want to do a roll call? Yep, no problem. Okay. My, this little thing is a little sticky here. My pad yep. is sticky. Uh, Bob. Yes. Keith. Yes. Lynn, yes. Mary. Yes. Missy. Yes. Damien. Yes. Bill. Yes. Olivia. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. And then uh, Allison wants to go to France in April break of 2023. So I'm actually going to share my screen because I've got a PDF of this and um, I want to share a window and so this this is to replace the trip 
that was canceled in 2020 that Jenny Yell was organizing. I'm going to do the organizing, but she's still going to be my partner um, in doing this during April break in 2023. We would leave on April the 15th, which is a Friday. Um, it's a little bit different from the French trip that got canceled before. This one is actually staying in <clears throat> central France and central and northern France and not going to the southern part of France. There's a lot more um, his historical content with this one. And we've added an extra day in Paris at the end to be able to have more opportunities to visit um, some Muse museums like the Musée d'Orsay. This one, we are in Paris and then we go to Normandy. Um, we also travel to Saint-Malo and Mont Saint-Michel, which are incredible places along the coastline. But one of the most powerful things that Jenny and I were able to do in 2003 when we did a trip to France was we took the students to the beaches of Normandy and then to the American cemetery that is near Pointe de Hoc and students were able to see um, where uh, there are so many service, service people that are buried from World War II, from the Normandy invasion. We get to learn a lot about D-Day and it is just an incredible trip um, going through these wonderful places. And then we would go back to Paris and then spend another full day after we come back in Paris before we come home on um, Saturday the 23rd of April. The cost for this um, right now is right at $3,000 um, for travelers under 23 years old. We also have a commitment free um, full refund plan that they're offering that if people sign up between now and November 18th, they can cancel for no reason other than they just maybe are not sure they want to do it by February of 2021. And there's no, there's no fees, no anything. They would get a full refund, but they would have to be enrolled in the mo monthly payment plan. So they're, they're trying to make it as easy for people to sign up and then think about it over a few months. And if people have second thoughts, they could pull out, but it's it's going to give a level of security to people thinking about this trip. But if something happens with COVID, I mean, bad, they would are they going to refund it no matter what? So if if um, anybody who signs up between now and November, if they if anything happens between now and next February, there would be a hundred percent return of any money that had been put towards it. Um, even if people decided to pull out uh, just because they, they weren't sure. After that, there, there is insurance that people can get that allows them to get a lot of the money that, that they've put into it. But if you're doing, if you're doing monthly pay payments, um, I have a, a, there's a PDF that I shared with Darius that he can put, if there's a, Google Drive that you all use that actually breaks down all of the policies that the company Explorica has. So people can see not only what what the options are for people for financial protection, but also the liability and and um, you know the plans that that they have and and the security that they have for for these trips. But what we'd like to do is we'd like to start recruiting if we have permission before um, the parent open house on the 30th. So parents could ask questions if they wanted to and get information. Cool. So I guess Al is looking for approval to get the ball moving on this one. So um, is the last anybody has any questions? Or if they want to go with these guys to France, it's thirty. You're welcome to come with us. Thirty-five hundred, thirty-five hundred, and something for us over twenty-three years old or whatever it is. There, adults. If not, I need a, a motion and a second, please. I'll make a motion, Mr. Chair. I'll second it. 
and we'll do a roll call. Yep. Uh, Bob? Yes. Keith? Yes. Lynn, yes. Mary? Yes. Missy? Yes. Damien? Yes. Bill? Yep. Olivia? Yep. Great. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you, Alan, everyone. Allison, since we got you on the screen, we got the school yep. committee here. How's everything going with the first few weeks? It, it feels hectic. That's what it seems like everybody seems to you know, everybody is so busy and and it's it's hectic <laughs> is it smoother than last year um it feels much better than last year um the kids are really glad to be back so and you can see it they you know they're they're turning back into regular high school students and, and middle school students and not little icons on screens. And it's so much nicer seeing them and having them in the building. So, and all of them at the same time, and also not teaching on a screen and kids in the room at the same time. Wow. Thanks, so. Allison. Okay, thanks. Uh, George, you have a summer building maintenance update for us? Oh, I just had a few brief things that I had thrown into the principal's report. Um, I can I can report on them here as well. So um, as Darius uh, and Shelley already mentioned, um, so obviously the HVAC repair in the um, in the auditorium. Also, we've had the ducts uh, cleaned both in the gymnasium and in the auditorium as well. Um, we had the the gym floor was uh, sanded, refinished, and we added a new logo, which is wonderful. Um, and obviously the new track. Um, so basically, that's that was the that was the the lion's share of the work that got done in the building. Um, we're looking, we're starting to look ahead at some of the other projects that we can that we can start uh, taking on um, with some of the money, with some of the funding that we have. Um, we're talking about potentially, uh, you know, looking at air conditioning in other parts of the building um, and, and things like that. But but overall, we were able to get a lot of good work done, and and the building looks wonderful. I, I, I'm sure you've seen the gym floor; it looks fantastic. Yeah. Um, the, the question I have for the HVAC, was the HVAC part of the, the correct me if I'm wrong, the envelope project above, above the library? Is that the same HVAC that's up there or is that in a different location, uh, George? I believe that's in a different location. Okay. Yeah. So that's totally different than, than the envelope project that we're going to do uh, in the near future, right? Yes. Okay. Thanks. Can I add two things to that that George didn't mention just to yep. put it out there of other things we're doing? Um, we are working on getting the Frontier phone system and the central office phone system on the same um, hardware, software, whatever it is, removing Frontier, I think, from the analog system. That's in process already. I think it's taking time and, you know, there's a lot of different components that Scott Paul is working on, but that's a huge project and it will be wonderful when everybody can communicate through their phones. Um, the other thing is that the science and math smart boards we did add, um, we purchased projectors as well. So that's cool too. Cool. Nice. And do we have to talk about the HVAC emergency repair or, or we have already talked about that? No, the only other placeholder I have on that is that the capital Committee subcommittee is meeting. We set a date for the 28th. 28th the 28th, where we're going to do a walkthrough. And um, remember, that's our subcommittee with this select board members. Um, we have a member from each town and a member from school committee from each town. Um, so we'll walk through the, where we are with the projects and start looking at. And I think where George just kind of talked about a little bit the discussion of adding HVAC to our capital plan um, as we've seen, you know, increased in. Increase in hot weather days, um, increase in humidity. Um, I don't know if it's more or less than before, but those are, it's not just, I said in a past meeting, um, it's not just cooling the building, it's also keeping that the dew point down in the, in the buildings where mold and you're seeing closing schools and buildings around that um, HVAC will help us in that area as well. So we wanna start planning ahead outside of what we've already have lined up, looking ahead even further and saying, okay, when can we add HVAC to this building and how can we do it in a way to systematically um, 
you know, if we can add to the third floor, will it trickle? Will we have trickle down um, coolness? Um, you know, that kind of stuff and, you know, how, how we do that. So um, anyway, that, that meeting is set up to start those conversation and what are we going to be doing next? Um, next of our projects, remember we had like the big six. Um, now that the track was the largest of them, we have HVAC. Um, the HVAC that's on there is not going to be able to bring in AC. That's really to get us off of the, completely off of the uh, control system that was antiquated. Um, I know when you walk in the back door, you hear a, a, a pressure system going. That's a that's a, 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 a air pressure system in order to change the pneumatics on the controls. We have a computer that has software we can't even update anymore, um, or even fix the computer. You know those kind of things. That's that's part of that one. Um, and we're also looking at you know next summer possibly doing the carpet throughout the building, and looking at the getting the HVAC done at that time. So um, we'll get I'll give a full report on where we end up from that committee, but we're moving forward in those other projects as well. Um, and what we are also looking at is whether or not we're going to do the roof this year prior to, um, you know, uh, prior to, you know, we have to let the towns know at a certain point how much money we've taken out. The flats of our roof are starting to fail. Um, some of the weather we've received recently has really tested that. Um, but, you know, you actually met, we actually met with Bob Lesko today to go through some of the some of the plannings of this stuff. And um, eventually that those flat roofs actually start to become brittle and the small cuts turn to big cuts. So um, there's 81,000 square feet of um, a flat roof that we have to look at. So we're going to be talking about how we're going to address that. We do have four hundred thousand dollars put aside for that. But since that estimate's gone up. Um, since that estimate has gone through, as you know, prices of everything has gone up in the last six months. So a lot coming on that front. We have a lot of projects going on capital. Um, it's exciting because you get new things like the track and the gym floor and, um, you know, and they're also looking at the, you know, the stage curtains and possibly redoing the stage floor. We have all these different kind of things running. Um, um, so it's exciting, but it's also going to be a lot of work and figure out how we're going to finance all that. So, so more will come on that. The um, the summer program update was that something that Sarah is gonna talk about? If Sarah, Sarah George, George, one of them, right? Oh, George, the building. I think George has got it as part of his principal report. I've got something else. So I can base I can speak to that as part of my principal report. So basically, we um, so uh, we successfully ran so we ran both a high school and a middle school, middle school programs for our kids this year. Um, high school students, we had credit recovery for them and we had skills reinforcement for middle school. Um, so we had over 35 students recover credit for our high school classes, uh, which puts them, put them back on track. Um, and we had over 35 students participate in our middle school jumpstart program, uh, which we've been running for years as well. Um, and in addition, we had uh, 30 plus students participate in specialized learning programs. Um, I was there for a, a good chunk of the summer and Sarah did a, a wonderful job running it. Thank you, Sarah. Um, but it was uh, we had a number of teachers uh, working this this year, and you know we were really able to get to a good spot with so many kids uh, who had fallen behind due to COVID, and um, and that's where and that's where we landed. So um, we were really pleased with how it turned out. We're probably going to be uh, looking to be able to do credit recovery again um, as we as we move forward as well with uh, with our high school students. Does Debbie have any questions for Sarah or George? Okay, thank you. Uh, I looked at that personnel update sheet. I've never seen one so big, George. So, and and I want and so a couple uh, and so a couple of things I wanted to just to give you as uh, terms of updates with the personnel. So, um, there is one person on there that's not a, a full time teacher, but I did want to point out who they were and and what they were doing. So, um, and that would be the the, the um, we hired Meg Riley to to work with our musical. Uh, we have three people that 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 work on the musical. We have our our director, we have our choreographer who's Olivia, and we have the musical director. Um, and so, the the person who works with the chorus and the musicians. And and so, uh, um, we had had a resignation, and so we got Meg Riley to do it. And she's and she's jumped in, and they've already started uh, discussing what the musical is going to be going forward. So we're going to be doing uh, as as far as I know. And Olivia, you can correct me if I'm wrong. But as far as I believe we're going to be doing The Sound of Music this year. Is that correct? They are a few of my favorite things. Yes. All right. Good. Um, uh, so, yes. And so uh, and besides that, we have we have a number of, of teachers. I want to say we hired we hired nine teachers. 
uh, this year. Um, so yeah, this is this is a this is a pretty substantial number for us. Yeah, um, but what? we're we're really pleased with with all of our hires. It's been it's been really nice. So the um, only thing I didn't see on there was do you ever replace the nurse that 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 you needed? Did you need a LPN or a nurse? We're still looking for an LPN. Okay. Yep. We're, we're putting still that out there if anybody knows anybody, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's that's a helpful. So I can put that out there. Yeah. Perfect. Anybody have any, any other questions for George or Sarah? Okay. Yeah. Uh, one thing that George and I had talked about, if it's okay, Bob, to just yeah. give the committee a kind of a last minute update. Um, we were really excited. Uh, we found out just a few days ago that we received a planning grant for Innovative Pathways um, from the Department of Education. Um, those of you who are working in schools may be familiar with it, but the state has made a real push to develop uh, career pathways for students, uh, whether that be students that are deciding to just complete uh, four years of high school, two years of college or four years of college, trying to create paths for jobs that are available in Massachusetts and they have five concentration areas that you can choose from. Um, so we did get a planning grant. We're anticipating that we will get the full grant once we write that, we would write that in October. Um, and it would allow us to provide courses and provide pathways for students who are looking to um, enter the workforce in, we're, we're still um, deciding what two paths we're gonna choose, but we're at the moment we've got manufacturing and healthcare um, and students would have an opportunity to do internships as part of this program, probably in the spring, maybe the fall of their senior year. Um, right now we do a lot with independent studies and school to community work and we're hoping that we can meet some of the students that participate in those programs, meet their needs through this Pathways program. And I'm just going to put a call out to the community um, because we are looking for internship locations and uh, community partners to work with in both the healthcare field and in um, the manufacturing field. And so by building those partnerships, that's really gonna determine uh, what direction we go with in with this program. We're in the very, very early planning stages. So, thanks. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, Darius, we have an MOA or MOU, I should say. I thought it was an MOA, but MOU. Yep. Um, Shelly is going to. You can, do it, Michelle. you can do it. I've heard you say it twice now. You can do it if you want to. This is only their third meeting tonight, so. Yeah. Go ahead, Shelly. Okay. So we are looking for a vote to accept a memorandum of understanding under the Every Student Succeeds Act for transportation claiming under Title IV-E, which uh, protects students that are in foster care. Um, the MOU is with the Executive Office of Health and Human Services, DESE, DCF, and it would be with the school district. So you are actually looking to, or we're looking for you to vote to accept this and appoint if you would like to um, Darius to sign off on the MOU or Bob, you could sign it as the chair if that's the preference. Um, but basically all that this says, if you did not read the multiple pages of it here, is that if you do have students that you are transporting, that you're their home district and they are now in foster care residing in another town, we're legally required to provide their transportation to their home school um, so that they're not displaced from their school and the home that they had known at the same time to try to make that easier for the child. So. This allows us to submit certain paperwork and claiming that if there is funds available through this um, Title IV grant and federal funding, that we could be eligible for transportation reimbursement if we have to have this instance come up. It doesn't come up every year. It doesn't come up in every school. Um, the MOU has never been signed for Frontier previously, and it could be because it's not something that is very frequent. Um, but I'm asking all of our committees to go ahead and vote and sign off on this so that if it does come up, we can get some type of reimbursement back because this is this would not be a budgeted expense. If we had to transport a student in foster care or a homeless student, we would go beyond our general fund budget and either go over a line or find funds from another funding source. 
Darius, correct me wrong. I heard it from the last meeting. We get reimbursed about 75%, you said? Well, that's the way it's, uh, Mary Raymond, it was, um, I, you know, she was talked about it at the Deerfield meeting. She was kind of a Debbie Downer about this, that she said that this is not usually funded by the state. And in her experience, trying to work with that, it's been difficult to get money back. Um, but we probably should have the mechanism in place um, so that we can at least try. Um, and, you know, you know, we have, it's not, it's, it's not as common as it is in other districts, but it is common enough where certainly a frontier um, where we have students that are displaced or there's a change in residence and, or homelessness where we have provided transportation. I think it happens yearly. It just hasn't been on a scale that has required a budget line. Thank you. If there's no other questions on that, we're, we need to have a vote on it. Um, we need a motion and a second. Move I'll make a motion. Second. Olivia and Bill. And Lynn, you could do the roll call. Yep. Bob? Yes. Keith? Yes. Lynn? Yes. Mary? Yes. Missy? Yes. Damien? Yes. Bill? Yes. And Olivia? Yes. Do we need to specify the signer for that? Yes, please. Yep. You can appoint Darius if you would like to. Superintendents can sign it. Do we have to have a vote on that too? No, just you'll be fine. Just put Darius down on the on the on the vote. Unless Darius is not here, I'll I'll come in and vote. I, I mean, or sign it. Whatever whatever is easy for Shelly. We'll get it signed and sent in tomorrow because I think October 1st is the reporting deadline, so. Good. Did we do a vote already on that? Mm -hmm. Okay, good, thank you. Okay, we got a couple more things here. Everybody awake? Okay. Uh, we got a revised policy, BEDH. Yeah, so uh, basically what you have before you is revising the policy to um, to not read um, written public comments submitted to school committee. Um, coming out of last meeting, I, I wanna talk about two things under this topic. The other one being that, you know, we did have a very difficult school committee meeting where, um, you know, statements were made that were offensive to um, groups of people in our community. And um, there were also written statements. And so right now, let me just talk about the first thing first, but I wanna talk about both things. Um, the first one being that, you know, the attorney advises that you don't read other people's statements into the public record for multiple reasons. One, that a being in the video age, someone's going to get catch you with a clip reading an, uh, an opinion that's not your own could be used against you know could be used in a nefarious way. Um, the second reason being that um, if you ran into problems with um, violation, perhaps let's say. Sarah Mitchell's, you know, you wrote a letter, um, you know, calling me all sorts of bad names, and then you edited that document. Now you're censoring, and at what point do you censor in order to fit a document to fit within things? And we don't want to be in the word in the business of censoring documents coming through. The third one is the um, we had problems at the last meeting where the length of the comment was was <coughs> some of the readings were actually longer than what we allowed people to say verbally. And then we really, that's something that we should try to clean up so that everybody is an equal, um, you know, is equal representation at meetings when they want to speak. And then a, um, the, the last one is that, you know, kind of remind people, and th again, this is your decision. These are just my, the recommendation that I have for you, um, is that um, the business, you know, you all can read the comments that you get, you get lots of feedback, and that is a way people can, they can give you the feedback, you read it, there's no need to read it again out loud. This is a business meeting that goes often goes very late. Um, and so that, you know, reading things again, as I think some several members said, why do we have to read these like out loud? We've already read them ourselves, if not more than once. Um, you know, if someone wants to come and read their own statement out loud to us, they can. So um, the old policy prior to the video um, where we wrote in, you can add, you can send us your written statements. We kind of added that. The old policy, there was never the assumption that you would read any written policy sent to the school community. We kind of added that as the assumption. And then as we posted, said, if you want to send us written comments, do it this way. So we're kind of adjusting with the time. So um, 
that is the suggestion there. Um, my other kind of thing I wanted to talk about, and I've also had conversations with school community, other members here, and people can jump on if you want to talk about it, is that, you know, statements were made and we didn't really talk about how do we support a chair. It was a confusing meeting because we didn't know really who was really running it and that kind of stuff. But that all being said, you know, we are, we are in a position of leadership where we needed to, um, you know, react when um, policies are broken, which includes, you know, um, saying inappropriate comments and um, making inappropriate comments towards groups of people in our community, um, those kind of things. And how do you go about doing that? Um, it, 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 by all means, you know, by, I said this at the Deerfield meeting just before this, it's, you know, being a chair during these times, being a school committee member during these times, it used to be used to go, we go a year and a half out of public comment. You know what I mean, and and that kind of thing. And now we're receiving a lot more. So, you know, things that you can do, and I'll just kind of I'll keep fast forwarding to what you can do, is that basically when someone says something or does something that's out of line, you basically what you do is you do a point of order to the chair, and that is the you're not talking to the person who made the comment, you're talking to the person who enforces the rules of the meeting, and you remind the chair, for instance. Um, looking at Damien. Damien reads, you know, we said three minutes per person. He's on minute seven and he just won't shut up. Okay. And so at that point, I could say, you know, point of order, uh, Mr. Chair, I believe we said that the comment was going to be three minutes tonight. And that sometimes helps people um, who are not either catching things. We also have community members who are neighbors and friends and that kind of stuff. And sometimes we get ourselves in it, but we need to support each other on how to address those kind of things. Um, and it is our responsibility to look out for all groups and look out for all statements. There's also the realities I want to put out there. There's also the realities of the time and place when you have 250 people on. It's a stressful moment and trying to digest what's being said and from your perspective, from other people's perspective and that kind of stuff. So um, I want to put that out there. They also said in the Deerfield meeting that I'll share, in fact, kind of, is that we could also read a a, uh, a version of the of the um, policy to remind people what can and can't be said in public comment and that what we're looking for in the sense of, you know, everything should be addressed to the chair, not other people or the, no, there should, you know, the major points that you shouldn't be using inflammatory language and um, those different ones within that policy that's in front of you, number, I think it's four and six and so forth. And so that was another great idea coming from the meetings prior to you. All right. I monopolize your time, please. So anyways, you have those, both those subjects to talk about. Um, but so the before we vote on it, we have to first vote on uh, rescinding uh, the policy because we usually have two readings on it. Correctly, suspend. You want to suspend your your dual policy if you want this to be enacted for the October yes. meeting. Um, you want to suspend your double reading of the two month reading. But this this is just for this particular policy. But in the future, we'll still have a reading one one month and vote on it the second month. So I need a motion um, to suspend the policy B E D H um, for for double reading. I could say, is that correct? Yep. So moved. You got the you got the in thing on that, Lynn. Thanks. And do I have a second? Second. Does anybody have any discussion about either one that we're going to vote on? We're going to vote on the suspend first. Any other questions? If not, Lynn, you want to do a, a roll call, please. Oh. Sorry, Bob. Yes. Keith. Yes. Lynn, yes. Mary? Yes. Missy? Yes. Damien? Yes. Bill? Yeah. And L Olivia? Yes. So now we got to vote on uh, the revised policy BEDH. Not everybody make a motion at once. <laughs> Most Missy, you got a question for us, Missy? Yeah. Hold on. Missy, you got a question? 
Yeah, I do. Um, are we are we discussing this? Or are we? We could discuss it after the motion in the second. If you want to, if you want to talk about the the revised policy. Perfect. Thank you. We got Move to adopt you. the revised policy, Mr. Chair. And do I have a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Damien. Any discussion, Missy? Thanks. Yeah, I, we we actually, um, I, I think that this is, I've had some discussions with, with Darius about this. I, I think that it's really helpful to, to outline what the rules are before public comment, not just as a reminder to the public, but also as a reminder to ourselves what, what rules we are enforcing and creating a safe space for, for everybody. Um, so I really, I don't know that that is, I just lost my space in this document, but I don't know that that's explicitly stated in the policy, but I would just. It, it wasn't stated in the policy, but I, I suppose I could add that wordage. I was saying that's what it was discussed at Deerfield. They said we should also do this. And so I wanted to share that with you. So. I agree. I think it's really helpful to make it a, a, a more consistent safe space for folks. Thanks, Missy. Keith, you got a question, sir? Yeah, so if we're having a, um, a normal meeting, conceivably anybody can walk in and, and ask for public comment. And this is different because it's the remote model. Is So the time, the 3 p.m. request has been eliminated, but they still have to ask for an email to get the invite. Is there gonna be a time limit on that or can they just right ask? Now it's on the, right now it's on the posting of 3 p.m. the day of the meeting. They okay. need to request if they want to, uh, how to submit you know, it also, we're going to change, I'm going to fix the wording that the, the last line doesn't make as much sense that mailing address, email address will be provided for those who want to provide written comments to the school committee. I'm going to change that wording of that line. It doesn't change the intent, but let's people know. People can still, we're still encouraging the public to write us, or you folks, write you folks, they can write me anytime you want, but write you folks, you know, ideas around whatever their ideas are. It's just not going to be read out loud as part of the public comment. Um, and obviously it also says in there, if they want to submit something that's longer than three minutes, um, you know, they can submit something in writing that's part of the public record that's longer than three minutes. It's just not, you know, within their three minutes of speech. The chair can also, you know, if we go back to the way things were prior to these kind of crazy times where we are, the chair can, you know, uh, make exceptions to rules. If someone doesn't have the ability to speak publicly or something of that sort, um, you know, we, the chair does have the leeway within that to do those kind of things. Um, if, you know, we haven't had public comment in a while. Someone comes in and says, well, we get a letter from somebody who wants to make a statement that says, you know, I want to thank everybody or memorial on something. There's always something. You try to set a rule that's definite, but there's always like, I want to discuss, you know, the, the passing of somebody or that kind of stuff. Um, and they give it to us in writing. You know, the, you know, those are things where we'll make exceptions. But this is, you know, debate during, not debate, but, you um, taking listen public comment during, you know, the bigger ones, I would say, you know, <laughs> just like we allow people to go over three minutes at the discretion of the chair. <clears throat> Is that you know, anything else, Keith? Thank you. Anybody else have anything they want to share? If not, uh, we have a motion and we have a second it and we need a roll call, Lynn, please. Yep. Bob? Yes. Keith. Yes. Lynn, yes. Mary. Yes. Missy. Yes. Uh, Damien. Yes. Bill. Yeah. And Olivia. Yep. Thank you. Uh, last thing is um, a delegate for the upcoming MASC, MASS Joint Conference. I'm going for uh, Waitley Elementary School. Who's going for Frontier? Livy, are you going this year? I can't go this year. I have to work. Is anybody going from our group? So Darius, can I be a delegate for both? Sure. <laughs> I, I'm just I'm just asking a question. Raise your hands like this. Oh, jeez. Um, I'll be honest, it, it, I don't remember a close vote on anything 
controversial ever on those things. So it's kind of, I always kind of laugh when they have you have a delegate and they're like, you know, they're voting to, you know, give someone the 30 year award and do, you know, I mean, do a lot of stuff that there's just kind of, you know, there's not much debate going on. Maybe there will be this year, but um, I don't think you get two votes, but if no one's going, no one's going. And that's, you can't, okay. I'm not going to force someone to go to the Cape for three days. <laughs> It's just I'm that we going. Need I know Darius is going, so I am gonna be there. Gotta go when a bunch of you guys go. Keep an eye on you. Um so I guess someone's going, we don't have to vote on it, right? Guess so. Um okay, we'll go to reports. Um uh, other than me having computer problems tonight, I have nothing to share. Uh Lynn, I don't think there's anything at the collaborative yet, right? Not yet, no. Okay. And George, do you have anything else to add to what you've talked about already tonight? Just a, just a couple of quick things, um, and just to sort of um, add to what Allison talked about earlier about you know the, the beginnings of the, our school year. I have to say, one of the things I really like to do is is walk through our building and and just and and one of the most difficult things about last year was walking through an empty building. Um, it's really wonderful to be able to walk through the building in the morning to see the the kids, to see the teachers, to see the staff there. It's just it's it's just it's 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 just back to life. It's just a really wonderful thing. So I just want to make sure that that I put that out there as well. Um, a couple other things that are on my report that I just want to make note of: um, the um, seventh and eighth grade are going to Morse Hill uh, next week. We're going to be taking uh, all of them. Um, breaking them up throughout the entire week. So we're really looking forward to that, um, to, to do team building. Um, and then um, also I wanted to talk about just a little bit. I know Scott Dredge has been working with um, this summer. He was working with uh, the, the, the sports captains uh, with Tom Schiff uh, to do um, basically um, work, work around social justice and inclusion uh, and, and conflict resolution. So that's a, that's a really wonderful thing. And uh, I also wanted to point out, uh, Scott reminded me that we entered a bus in um, Demolition Derby uh, down at the Three County fair, Fairgrounds, and we won. All so right. that, that was a cool thing, too. Yeah. Did we paint it red? Uh, it was painted. I, I think it was painted gray. I don't think it was painted red. It had but an amazing a, hawk on it. But we really? did. We lost a bus driver, but but that's okay. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> where do we get the bus from the drip goes i for I, honestly uh i forget i asked scott where we got the bus from and he told me and i can't they, remember yeah they actually they provide the buses in the yeah. the as Very part tough. of their grouping the, the they all went down together and painted it together so the kids yeah. painted the bus for the crash up derby against yeah sarah against just posted that schools. they ran out of paint colors <laughs> if you go to the website you'll see a picture of the bus on the website oh cool yeah cool and Darius, do you have anything else on your third meeting tonight? Nope, I hit it all. Does anybody else want to share anything? Missy? Well, oh, were there lots of hands that just went up? Yep. <laughs> your hand went up. I, well, I was just going to um, uh, let everybody know and that a group of us met to go over uh, to have a group discussion on the book that we talked about reading. Uh, so you want to talk about race before this meeting. Did you want to share how the meeting went tonight? Oh, it was good. I, I think that uh, we had what, Keith and Damien and Lynn and Olivia and I uh, on, on to talk. And I think we had a, a really good discussion and would love to continue to do this kind of work. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you all. I'll make a motion to adjourn. That's a second. All you have to do is raise your hand. All in favor? Good night, everybody. Oh, Libby, you want to say something? Oh, you raised your hand. Good night, everybody.